In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the Pure Maths Paper 3, specifically Paper 3.2 from Cambridge A-Level exams from 2023. I'll be doing all this on the board. Hopefully, it'll be a lot like you're used to your teacher doing in a classroom. If you want other questions from this paper, you should be able to find it in a playlist in the description below. And if you find any of my videos uh, useful, I'd greatly appreciate liking, subscribing, or even sharing it to a friend sitting the exams this year or next. In question six, we're given this trigonomic function here, and they tell us it has an answer, it has a root, and they want us to show that the calculation, the answer for x here, is between 0 0.5 and 1. Now, we can't just solve this using some of our formulas. There probably is a tricky way to solve this. I don't know it. Uh, I've never bothered looking it up, but I don't know it. It's a bit tricky. There's, you could also try and solve it by drawing some pictures. We could draw a tangent. We could draw a tan x over 2, which is actually the same. So let me use this one, uh, that would that would become, uh, yeah, that would become pi here. And then we could draw one over tangent, which would become infinity divided by, uh, one divided by infinity becomes zero, zero, approaching zero divided by, dividing by approaching zero becomes infinity. We get something like this for this shape. Again, you don't have to do it. It's not really gonna help us. It'll help me a bit as a teacher to show you what it looks like. Uh, 3x on the other side looks like this. And uh, so this is pi. Um, so that means that's 3, 2, 1, 0. So the answer, yeah, it looks somewhere between zero, uh, half and 1. If I drew this correctly enough, you'd probably be able to answer this to a reasonable extent if you were really careful on drawing it. But like I said, that's not really answering what they wanted. They want us to show with calculation, not with drawing, not with algebraic solution. With calculation, that well, in part B, they're actually going to get. A, we're going to try and find the answer to two degree to two uh, decimal places. But for now, they just want to show it's between zero point five and one. So um, what I would do is I just put zero point five in uh, cotan uh, one over two zero point five is equal um, 3 times 0 0.5 and or basically I'm testing this uh, let's put a little question mark in here and I put that in and just see what I get out and remember cotan is just cotan is the same as um, 1 over tan so you can just put that in your calculator and you would get uh, let me check my notes here um, as I'm checking my notes, I haven't bothered putting the actual number in it, so I better do it here live. Uh, 1 divided by tan of 0 0.25 is, oh, excuse me, the left hand side would be 3.92. Uh, oh, I did write that down somewhere, there we go. And the right hand side is uh, 1.5. Uh, so we actually find out the left hand side is not equal to the right. The answer is not 0 0.5. The left hand side is bigger than the right hand side. And I'd go ahead and do this again for um, 1. Half times 1 is equal. So let's even leave out the equal. Uh, is equal 3 times 1. I'd put these into a calculator again. And uh, let's see. Do I Am I able to see my notes this time? Uh, 1 point. 1.83 you would get putting this in a calculator and this side you'd obviously get 3 and 3 is bigger than 1.83 so this is what they wanted you to get I think they'll give you full marks for writing this but just to be sure I would put in a little extra I would say because uh, the coat because let's just say left hand and right hand side because the left hand side is bigger than the right hand side at 0 0.3 and then at 1 the left hand side is smaller than the right hand side they must cross they must pass somewhere between there the answer for x must be somewhere between 0 0.5 and 1 just graphically what they're what we're seeing here at 0 0.5 this I remember this slope line was cotan that's above and this this uh, straight line here is 3x so this is above this one 
this number is bigger than this number. And then at some point, at one, this number is bigger than this number. This one is bigger than this one. That tells us they must cross somewhere. You can use any amount of English. You could even draw a little picture like this beside it. But like I said, I think the examiner will even take just these numbers right here. Okay, let me uh, clean this off and we'll do part B. Maybe I'll just leave this one picture down here because it might be handy to look at now and then. In part B, they give us this scary looking iterative formula here. And they want us to show that um, if this converges, it converges to alpha. And alpha was the same alpha that was the answer to the previous one. Um, the, the value for x, what, where, whatever it is down here. So how do you, sh basically they're asking us to show that this is pretty much the same as this. That's, that's what they're getting to here. And this is quite common as a question, so it will come up. Well, first of all, they're saying if it converges. So that means basically if um, x n plus one is the same as n, they, at some point they become the same number. So if I just write this all out again, but just with x instead of x n plus one, so it's equal one over three x plus four. And notice we're using tan instead of the cotan. Hell, let's just change this one right now to one over uh, tan. Actually, let's just be a little careful there, put a bracket around. Um, tan, invert, uh, the inverse of tan one over three x. So I'm getting rid of all the x n's and the x's. We're just assuming it does converge, they're all the same. So what all I need to do is show that this is the same as this one here. It'd be hard to break this one apart, but this one we should be able to play around with more. Uh, let's multiply everything by three, and we get that. Um, you can get rid of all out here. And, and take x from both sides, and let's divide by four while we're there. Take x from both sides, we get two x. 2x divided by this 4 here, and that's equal to the inverse tan of 1 over 3x. And to get the tan of both sides, tan of the inverse tan destroys each other. Where, let's just put that in here, tan here, and destroys that one. Um, let's see, we're, we're getting close. 2 and the 4, that goes in 2 times, x, tan of x over 2. Close, 1 over tan of x over 2. Uh, let's multiply 3x by both sides. Or basically, the 3x comes up the other side, we can just think of it as. And let's divide this one across, 1 over tan x over 2. And that's the same as that, sorry, yeah. The other way around, 3x is equal to this. This is equal to 3x. That's all they wanted you to do there. And um, that was two marks for that, just show that that's the same. And Students, the first time I show students this, they have no idea to do that. Of course you don't. There's, there's no real reason to jump to that conclusion. But honestly, once you're shown it, it comes up multiple times in exams. Just, uh, just recognize that fact that you are gonna have to rearrange something like that. Now in part C, they want us to use this formula here to, to find the answer, to find alpha, to find the root, what, what the value of x is. I'll go ahead and uh, uh, rub this out here just so we have a bit of room to do it. So to use the iterative formula, I'm going to do it um, the slow way twice and then I'll take a few shortcuts with the calculator after that. So the slow way is we make a guess. We pick a number that we think is right. That can be any number you want, but they have told us the answers between uh, 0 0.5 and 1. It's somewhere between there. So really I would Personally, I would just guess at 0 0.75. Um, and we'll put the letter down. You can put x1 equals this. Um, I often use x0, Honestly, it's no difference. x0 equals that, that's my first guess. Now I use this formula. What, what's after zero? x1. This formula tells me x1 is equal to one over three, x0 plus four, tan minus one, uh, one over three x zero. That's what that tells me. Or again, if you wanted to put x one up here, that's okay, and that'll be x two. Hell, if you wanted to put x 29 up there and then start at 30, 
The examiner would probably think you're a bit strange, but they won't mind you using zero or one here. Um, so, but we've decided what x0 is. And again, you get to decide this first one. Like I said, I would suggest it to be between uh, 0.5 and one. Otherwise, some strange things can happen because if you pick the wrong number, uh, you can end up getting caught in a loop or you can end up uh, not converging off to something. If you pick the wrong point on that, I haven't looked at this uh, function or what it looks like, so I'm not sure if uh, you might be in trouble on this one, but the examiner has helped you. So let's use that help. Okay, so I would put all this in. Uh, X1 is equal, um, yeah, just change X0 for this, put it all into a calculator and we will get um, 0 0.8076. Uh, you might have different numbers because you might not pick this. You could have picked 0 0.6, all that's important is you follow their rules that you write out four decimal places. Okay, eventually we want two decimal places as the answer, but it's important that we just follow their rules and put out four decimal places. Okay, next, again, I'll do it slowly one more time. X2 is equal to one over three multiplied by X1, which is 0 0.8076 plus four, times tan, inverse tan, one over three times 0 0.8076. Put all that into a calculator and we will get, uh, sorry, check my notes, uh, 0 0.7911. Now, I won't, I'm not gonna write this every time. You can, I, I, I'd nearly even say, maybe you should, you should only need to go to X, uh, X4, Oh no, X5 you need to go to, in, in, with this number at least. But there's a nice trick to do this. Um, if you, to put the first number, put the first number into your calculator as the answer. So I just write points, uh, 0.75 equals. Now your calculator remembers that the answer is 0.75. And then in the calculator, I just put in uh, one divided by three, multiplied by the answer, the, the, the original answer I got, plus uh, four inverse tan of uh, one divided by three times the answer. Three times the answer. Let's remember all my brackets. Now, if I press equals, it's done the next line for me. Uh, sorry, uh, my calculator is actually just gonna do this. If I press the equals, my calculator will get to this line. Um, yes, it's got there. Now, I don't need to type it all again. I press equals again, calculator give me this line. If I press equals again, calculator give me this line. Now, if you don't know how to do this, well, first of all, ask your teacher, ask a friend, somebody probably knows how to do this. Uh, there's probably a video online showing you. Um, say if you write in all of this, because this question comes up most exams. And uh, Now, next thing, I'll, I'll do a few more of these. Uh, let's see, X4. Uh, equals uh, 0 0.7943 and x5 equals 0 0.7946. We could stay going. I can, the great thing about calculator is I can just press this 10 times and fairly quickly get to x15 um, and I, I get an exact answer. Well, as, as, as exact as the calculator will do, which is I think 10 decimal places. Okay. On to the final answer, they wanted it two decimal places. These were all four. What's the actual answer now? Well, how about if I round this, if I say this is approximately equal 0 0.81, this is approximately equal to 0 0.79, this is approximately equal to 0 0.80, I think that rounds off to. This is approximately, so as you go, you're like, oh, look, I'm close to the answer, but I don't know what it is yet. This one is 0 0.79, and this one is 0 0.79. Once you get repeating, once you get the same number twice, you've gone far enough. If you'd gone another one, you'd still get um, uh, 7, 9, 4 probably as well. You, you'd just get it more and more exact each time. That's, that's how you do it in form. Comes up, if not every exam, at least it's a, I'd say 70% chance to be on your exam. Learn how to do it. It's not, it, 
It's difficult the first couple of times you see it, but they're fairly similar every time. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day.